And welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I am your host, James. Just with me is John Cameron. And down at the end is friend of the show, Tyler Cusky. Welcome back, Tyler. How have you been? I'm doing pretty good. Glad to be back. All right. Thank you. Well, we're glad, maybe, <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, to be here. I'm not entirely sure today because we get to talk about... I shouldn't about, have to be here. <laughs> we get to talk today about Joe Biden signing the... Uh, what is it? Inflation Reduction Act that, quite frankly, even That's MSN... That's a nice name for something that that doesn't do. Yeah, the, even the MSN, MSN didn't call it that. They call it the Biden Signs Major Climate, Health Care, and Tax Bill into Law, which is actually honest. Uh, I can't believe it. Journalists were honest on the internet. <laughs> the, the headline was actually honest. I'm kind of shocked. But, but well, if if even you know the the propaganda network was not as bad as CNN, which they used to call the Clinton News Network, but MSN was always a close second. If they're starting to actually speak the truth about this insanity of of uh, creating more inflation to fight inflation. You know, then maybe that's a good sign. Yeah, when, you know? when I first saw saw that the the um, that 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 being or that law being passed or that bill, uh, I, I was digging the green new, green new deal. Mm. Like yeah. it was just a repeat of that because like a it, smaller green new deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, just, it just it was totally environmentalism and nothing to do with inflation. Mm. Yes, it's there's nothing to do with inflation except mm. create more inflationary pressure. Right, that's all they're doing. Yeah. they're creating yeah. more money and they're going to spend more of it in areas where they want which where their just, buddies are yes where areas their buddies are. areas where their buddies are and they're they're spending it in all of this stuff will benefit uh blue states and people who vote for them and uh rich liberals who are the only ones that use green energy and clean energy and drive teslas uh will benefit uh people that can afford uh what's left after the the tax rebate to put solar panels up and wind or bird choppers, as I like to call them, or I like to call solar panels heat sinks. Um, you know, the only people that benefit from that are, are basically rich folks in California and some other places, and they feed the, uh, the Democratic Party. So it's basically give my friends money, and then uh, the evil corporations that, that sometimes vote against them, that give the graft and corruption to the Republicans instead of the Democrats, they're going to get taken on the tax bill. But you said you dived into that tax bill a little bit, and it's going to hurt small businesses worse than courts. With all the exceptions written into the bills, the one people who can't af who can afford to find the exceptions are the big corporations who have the tax attorneys and accountants yeah. to do it. Yeah. It's mom and pop shops who aren't going to be able to... to, to mm -hmm get the exceptions but only rich people like those eighty-seven thousand irs agents they're only going to go after rich people <laughs> yes yeah. well i call but it with it inflation <laughs> everybody's rich it's the protect democrat voters it's to buy democrat votes i just the it's the to buy democrat votes off the backs of working people act that's yeah. kind of what it, it's kind of yeah that's well, kind of what i've kind of decided well i mean that's pretty is. much how all the bills are i mean even even the, the patriot bill you know yeah, everything is. It, it's just. Why don't we decide fancy. we should call the Patriot Act the the uh, let's put in a totalitarian state and not let you get a trial act or yeah. something, something like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. basically the, you know the, as the same animal, different different wing or whatever. You know, that's yeah. Republicans' version of, of uh, naming yeah. something fancy. That's not well. That none of these do. bills, even in California, if we maybe get to it later. The, none of these bills actually do what they say. I mean, you can pretty much guarantee if they name a bill something, it's going to do the exact opposite. It's, it, yeah. it's, just, it's pretty much guaranteed, mm. unless it's something completely. I, I love how, they, how, they, how they'll have uh, items in a bill that have nothing to do with each other. You don't, there's always yeah. there's always that one object that they, it's like, what does this have to do with that? What, well, they had why are you banning assault weapons inside a climate bill? <laughs> now, why are you calling the Why are you calling the weapon that is owned by more people in the country a a weapon of war i mean it's just all it's all crazy stuff folks vote libertarian <laughs> it is it's kind of we've we've gotten so far down the rabbit hole right that we, we we're sitting here laughing about this but this is actually serious oh, this yeah. should be serious they're promoting these things as well, that's as way a, too important to take seriously as an inflation yeah. reduction act and but even the media now knows that it has nothing to do with no. fighting inflation no. it's just simply passing putting the label on yeah. something so they can get it passed yeah. and pat themselves on the back for doing something yeah. i don't know did they include any uh and and i'm not even going to use the word uh the phrase um well i have to so i can yell about it uh student loan forgiveness 
Well, basically, <laughs> basically that's that's theft, folks. If you buy a car and refuse to pay for the car that you agreed to pay for, they take the car. So if you want to refuse to pay for the degree that you got, take the degree, take the degree back. And uh, you know, I like that's I even like worse, the. Sean, though. They didn't use. They didn't even write a bill for that. They just use an executive order to to yeah. eliminate. Can't do some that, bro. That. That's constitutional. But since yeah. yeah, but who's enforcing the constitution? Oh, nobody. <laughs> that's that's the problem. When when the criminals are enforcing the constitution, we yeah. end up with everybody's a criminal but the criminals. Mm. And that's kind of where we're at now. It's it's a strange. Yeah, it's I can't. I bring place. myself to look at the law, but the idea that I mean. The idea that you, you taxing corporations is to generate income is somehow a good thing when in basic economics says that if you tax corporations, they're going to have less money to invest, less money to spend on equipment to produce cheaper goods. They won't be able to hire employees. Their revenue is going to go down as a zero-sum game. But for some reason... Nobody reads history books or economics books anymore, except well, for the commie crap they're teaching in school. Yeah. Well, and, and consumer pays all costs. So yeah. even if a business does pay taxes, they're just going to pass that cost on or yeah. pass taxes as much of it on as they can. Consumer, it's ne yeah. never yeah. once. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the case of, case of corporations, people don't. How can people not understand that a corporation owns nothing? A corporation is owned by the people who own its stock. And, and you're taxing widows, orphans, pension funds, and retired people. Well, you're really taxing their customers. That's who yeah. you're really taxing. Yeah. I mean, they can maybe they can eat some of that in, in efficiency so you, gains, but they really don't. You, yeah. The end consumer pays all bills. The not, end, not to Debbie off on, on a, a tangent of taxes, but, I mean, you can actually, if you take your, uh, I've actually done the math here, uh, uh, and other people can confirm me, you can take your gross GDP, an amount of tax revenue that's been brought into the U.S. government all the way back to 1950 to today, okay? Take that. It's always, always averaged out approximately about 17% of, of GDP is how much tax revenue gets in, no matter what. So no matter what, you had high tax policies where we had low tax policies, whether a Republican was in office or a Democrat was in office, it always, sometimes it'll, it'll shoot up to like 21%, but within a few months later, it drops right back down. Some it'll drop down to like 14%. It, it always hovers around 17% of gross GDP. So that, that goes to show you, because the economy changes based off of your tax rate. So if you're going to only get 17% of your GDP, you might as well just allow everyone to have the, be the, the consumer have the better, better end of the stick by having lower taxes. There's, there's yeah, well, mm -hmm. and the real Because then they'll pay more income tax. Well, yeah. if you really wanted just to get as much income taxes, tax as you want, they'd simplify the system so you couldn't cheat it. But mm -hmm. what they really want is control. That's why the system. There's no is. way they can get more money. So the, I think it, it's a pipe dream that thinking you can get more money. No, you're, you cannot get more than 70 percent of GDP. We've never been able to do that. I mean, as far as we've had these records, like, I, I, like I'm serious. You go, you can do the, do the math yourself. You can go to WhiteHouse.gov. They have all the information there. You cannot receive more than 17 percent. Like it, it will shoot up only for a few months, but does, it's not sustainable. You cannot sustain a, a significantly higher number. Well, none of the stuff they're doing is sustainable, man. Fiat, fiat currencies all fail. It's just a matter of time. And it's not just the U.S. I mean, you can feel like yeah. other countries. It's the yeah. same thing. So it's, it's your, your GDP. Uh, it's always going to be a percentage of your GDP no matter what mm. policies you put in place. You can only suck so much blood from a turnip, right, is, is kind of the, the yep. thing. And, and so, but the reason our tax code is as complicated as it is because they want the control to manipulate society mm. rather than just we just want income. If it was just about income, it would be simple. You would have a simple tax code where you couldn't, where there's not room to manipulate, where people don't have room to hide, and or like a flat tax, a flat tax or something, something simple that where enforcement costs are low. You know, enforcement well, costs are low and compliance is easy. And in 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 the, we don't have in the United Kingdom, except for I think the top three or four percent of income earners, uh, people basically it's a pay-as-you-go plan. You don't even fill out uh, an income tax form. They just accurately withhold the proper amount based upon their pretty simplified tax system. Yeah, then you just and you don't even just you don't mistakes. even file income yeah, tax. Yeah, I think that ha ha and I think both uh, I think both Ob Obama and uh, Reagan both w were in favor of, of uh, simplifying that. But yeah, it, but the problem in the UK is they tax you other places. Mm. So you have VAT taxes. Yeah, VAT. Like, you, 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 you got other countries that have a good example, like Switzerland, uh, it's really low tax over there. Uh, even Japan, it's like 2% of your income. 
Well, yeah, but their their effective tax rate in in Japan is one of the highest in the world. Well, though, it's because the they, they have higher like corporate tax. Yeah. 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 So they yeah, they're gonna get your money from you somewhere, yeah. I suppose. Is and what the and point is. even after they get all the money that can be got, they're still gonna print more because. If they don't print more, they can't give their friends the funny money. Yeah. And what is giving their friends funny money to lose? It creates economic bubbles. And a housing current economic bubble we've been experiencing is a housing bubble. You know, housing costs are out of control. But is that starting to come to an end? Mm-hmm. We've seen that you know the housing starts have dropped almost ten percent, close mm-hmm. to ten percent mm-hmm. recently. Um, well, I'm I'm kind of excited for that. I'm trying to trying to buy a house. Actually, I'm in the market right now. So yeah, it's, if you, you know any houses for sale, wait know. six months and you'll get some cheaper houses. Is what's going to happen, <laughs> <laughs> right? Actually, well, it's funny. All the houses I've been looking at with my real realtor, I've been looking for the past few months. Um, I'll look at them and they'll be way above than what I want to pay. And all of a sudden, a few months later, that same house will drop eighty grand or something like that. I've, I've been getting notifications on my phone or my, my like calls from my realtor and say, "Oh, that house that you looked at, you liked." You said it was too much. They just lower the price another eighty grand today. Like, like it's everyone's. I, I'm seeing it happen right now. So I, I know it's 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 more speculative saying it's going to happen. Like I, I'm seeing it happen right now. So mm. houses are dropping. House- well, even if even if housing prices, you know, and they're saying prices went up. Let's say housing prices went up. I know they went up way more than this, but let's say they went up last year by twenty percent. In California, they're not doing it in the rest of the country. The rest of the country doesn't have egregious zoning uh, laws, uh, comparable wages. Doesn't cost you a hundred thousand dollars to get a permit. They don't ask for money to to take it from people to build housing to create uh, low income housing that somehow costs more than the housing they took it from. You know, so California especially has created its own bubble. But even if it was twenty percent last year with inflation, it was only ten percent. So, I mean, you know, you're, they're quoting all these numbers and, and they don't ever say, oh, adjusted for inflation. These are raw dollars they're talking about. And if you look at, you know, how, how much inflation there's been since, let's say, 1970 in this country, it's insane. Yeah. And well, with California and other these other places with the highest places of uh, housing costs are losing p- people. You know, like hundred, what over a hundred thousand people left California last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have so, a great at some point, of California. Uh, at some point, that you know, housing costs has been so bad for so long. It, it's really put our our, our politicians. Uh, California has their backs against the wall. Uh, it wasn't too long ago. I think it was about I want to say about six months ago. California passed a passed a law that I actually liked. They they rezoned all single family. I'm not family moving, homes. man. I'm not sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they they passed a law that all single family homes are now rezoned as multifamily. You don't need to pull the permit. It doesn't matter what what your uh, city ordinances are. It doesn't matter uh, if you live in a HOA, whatever. You now can legally rent out your rooms. Uh, and it's, and I, I, the reason why they did this not because they wanted to, because they they have an act, they had to know what to do. Their hands were against the wall. Their hands were tied. They literally had to uh, allow everyone to start renting out rooms in their houses mm-hmm. and make every house uh, a multifamily uh, house. What is the additional dwelling unit? AD is that what yeah, they call ADU. it? ADU. Yeah. 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 I know somebody's building. So typically you three need or four of those in his backyard. Yeah, yeah. it's going to rent them out for you know a thousand bucks a piece. Well, you used to need to pull out, pull, pull, out, pull out all the permits to do that. Yeah, now you yeah. don't need the, those permits anymore because California passed that law yeah. recently. Uh, I forget the name of the law, but if you can look it up. And yeah. yeah. Well, I'm with the, here to that. Day late and a dollar short. Well, the problem is, the problem with that is, is that the people who passed that law were the same people who put the laws in place yep. in their in their counties and their localities that that's basically <laughs> oh we made a mistake we need to fix it real quick before we catch on <laughs> yeah and now they're going to take credit for it hey look at all these these local people have screwed up their economies we're going to fix it Patrick, wait you guys were the ones in charge of those counties when you passed those laws you but the dunderheads it drives me crazy dunderhead Dunderheads. Yeah. Oh, How, man, wash people. out your mouth with soap, James. Amen. Dunderhead. <laughs> Such language. <laughs> <laughs> I got a better word for that, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but, you know, in the, as of Tyler's experience, so housing costs are sinking. And because they're so out, outsized, California and New York, they're so outsized. Um, the bubble was so outsized. When it pops, it's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. But is it, the question is, it's going to hurt the middle of the country where they didn't have mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, excessive. no. Well, the middle of the country has benefited from people fleeing uh, California with equity, you know. So they've, 
and and people in Boise and people in Oregon even even though Oregon's pretty expensive and people in Nevada and all these places where uh, in Florida where California has been moving are pretty upset because they're coming in with all this quote unquote equity this funny money uh, from a, a scarcity place they sold a house for five hundred thousand that would be one hundred twenty eight thousand in Mississippi. And they're driving up prices everywhere else. So they've actually, people who've owned property, not people who are trying to buy property in other states, have benefited from the exodus of California money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't want to accept that. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're more more or less afraid of Californians uh, voting blue again. But the reality is the number actually shows that most Californians that move out, move out of California usually don't vote blue. No, no, there. No. Yeah, people are saying you're going to bring those crazy ideas here. No, the reason they I think left it was, was it Abbott's in Texas. Abbott's exit polls even showed that the people who voted against Abbott were more likely Native Texans than they were Californians. Yeah. Well, because yeah, well, we've lost the Libertarian Party is losing some of their best uh, activists to uh, New Hampshire and other states. And mm -hmm. I, I know the same thing has happened to the Republican Party. They've lost a lot of their their better activists have moved. Mm -hmm. have left just because it's an unfriendly state to live yeah and if you and even if you're not you know uh left or right you're just kind of a centrist you know if, if they lose if they move then you know it's the same thing mm -hmm. the, the real problem with this exodus is it's ripping communities and families apart mm -hmm. you know that's was my biggest issue and it didn't need to be mm -hmm. you know yeah we, we yeah, didn't a lot of my a lot of my family is all moved to texas I, um you know, my parents uh, bought some property out there. My cousin lives out there. Two of my aunts moved out there. Uh, my brother was living out there for a while. Now he's in Mississippi right now. But, you know, all my family's moved into those states. Uh, I, I got one brother left, and my cousin moved back from Florida for some weird reason, but that was for another back family. Back from where? Back from Florida. He went Florida. moved to Florida and came back recently. Uh, but I, it was it was uh, un unrelated to wanting to be be in the California. That wasn't the reason why. It was, <laughs> it was, it was for family. But... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's ripping families apart. It, I know it's ripped our local community apart. We've lost two or three of our better activists. You know, when you're mm -hmm. a small community and you lose two or three of your better activists, it, it really hurts. And mm -hmm. so, you know, these disruption, this economic disruption caused by housing bubbles, you know, the, it's deeper. It's deeper than we like to imagine. Um, but let's move on. New police. Oh, and by the way, that was AB 54, I believe, that year told me that your uh, bill was the year. to your. AB 54 that allows you to, re to re yes. rezone your, your house. The ear told me that it was the AB 54. Ah, yeah. ah AB 54. Yeah. Thanks, ear. <laughs> <laughs> AB 54. Yeah. There you go. So, so new piece of account police peace accountability laws. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> police accountability laws are testing agencies' ability to handle the department's troubles. Uh, like in recently, LA County had a, a, a officer involved shooting, and now that the state attorney general is mandated to investigate all these you know, arm, unarmed shootings. Mm. And it turns out that they don't have the resources to handle these. Oh, well, they're claiming they don't have the resources. Yeah, anytime the government says they don't have resources, I'm, I'm wondering how many consultants they, they brought in to <laughs> analyze to <laughs> it to say that they don't have the resources and they need to hire another consultant to tell them how to acquire the resources and, it, and a uh, hiring group to hire the people that they need. and a training group to train the people that they need and all those contracts will somehow go to the not the lowest bidder but the person that gave the the biggest contribution to the local well, dirty and, politician well and the not that i'm a cynic or anything folks and the police are investigating the police well sorry we can't investigate because we just don't have enough resources mm -hmm. it's not our fault we don't want to investigate anyway but we <laughs> You know, it's, it was always a scam. Mm. This whole thing was always going to be a scam. We, we always told it was going to be a scam. Mm. And having just a higher level of police force investigate uh, police, you know, it's kinda, abuse wasn't going to solve a problem. It kind of reminds me of uh, an article I was reading uh, a while back. Uh, I forget the name of the city. It's a small town in, in Texas that, that fired their police department, uh, their entire police, and they really hired a private security company by, by a bunch of uh, former veterans. Um, and not only did they reduce crime significantly, they cut the budget like significantly. I think it was their crime was reduced by 50%, and they had a much reduced budget, and they had a much friendlier outlook for the community because, mm -hmm. from a private perspective, they were they were worried about maintaining that contract. Uh, and they what they did is they uh, only targeted areas that would, would make sense for there to be a crime. You weren't patrolling areas where looking for a crime. You were you were going to areas where you would expect a crime to be, and and, and they were more on the on the people side, and so. 
it, it was a good example of some. I mean, it was a small town, so you can't. You know, whether or not that works on a big, larger scale, whether or not a private company can do that. Scale it up. That's a tech term you're familiar with. Can we scale it up? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it worked on a small scale. I mean, it was. Just, I don't know. Can't remember the size of the population mm-hmm. size of that, of that town, but it was a small town that they that they hired, and and that was a great. It worked out great for them. So I mean, who's the who's the guy that. Um, is he city council in Riverside? He was Jeff a mayor Hewitt. of a little town? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you know him. Jeff Hewitt, yeah. yeah Hewitt. So Jeff Hewitt, when he was mayor of that little town, didn't they get rid of their fire department and then contract out that work? They got rid of some public agency, completely just eliminated it and contracted right. with another agency to do it and saved, I don't know, spent like a third of the money because of the bureaucracy and pensions and everything that were attached to the government doing it. So... At least on a small scale, that works. Yeah, I think maybe it was a retirement program or something. Yeah, yeah, something. I can't, yeah, I think it was. I vaguely remember some long yeah. lines, but yeah, yeah something of nature where they yeah. privatized. I, I know we beat schools to death in the other show, but you know the, <laughs> that's the, next week's show. The, 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 I mean. Yeah, I mean next week's show. The the, the biggest problem with with um, with government doing anything is the overhead because their their benefits are so bloated. They're can't fire people, layers of bureaucracy, and the huge pensions they get when they retire. I mean, most teachers retire in the state of California earning their highest income year the day they retire and forever. So how in the heck can you support that? No private company could support that. Nobody. Well, maybe IBM, but they invest well. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, well, that is a problem, isn't it? Is They've set up a long-term... They set up taxpayers with a long-term bill, mm-hmm. despite the fact that we seven not, trillion dollar bill. We, we don't even know that this is going to be a long-term service, really. Mm. You know, pensions never made sense to me because companies, especially if you're working for a private company, never made sense to want to be part of a pension because you're expecting this company to live longer than you, and companies don't have a tendency to live longer than people. Yeah, they yeah. have a tendency to die. Well, and that's that's why I'm not I'm not agreeing there should be. You have. The, the pension is, is separate from the company, and the, the pension is... It should be, but it's yeah, often not. N- well, and then you have pension. No, in, in, in there is actually some laws, and you got pension guarantee court. But if everybody goes upside down all at once, that three cents on the dollar that pension guarantee court has got to guarantee all the pensions isn't going to work. So you're, you're right. But, you know, if you've got some decent folks handling your investments and it's not a Ponzi scheme like Social Security, then uh, <laughs> you could be all right. I mean, there, there are lots of rock-solid pensions in, in the country, but very few of them are public folks because they know they can s- stick their fangs into the jugular of John Q. Public and s- suck his uh, retirement money out to pay for their own. That's the problem right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, One of them. We'll go back to going to kick some lawmakers. California lawmakers are using a secretive process to kill what, what others would consider good bills. So where good bills go to die is what they actually call it. <laughs> it's, committee. Yes. They die in committee. They die in committee. They never see the light of day. Or what they even do worse is they'll gut, and, what is it called, a gut and chuck? They'll, they'll take, a, take a bill that has already gotten through part of committee, yeah. and take out all the language, put in a whole new Very language nice. completely unrelated to anything, and then send it on its way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to the rest of us, this is corruption. But to them, this is, you know, just routine daily business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. To a normal human being, you know, selling, advertising something, getting it through part of the process is one thing, and then completely changing it and then continuing on with it like it, no changes happen. Mm-hmm. Is I seem to remember something called Obamacare that, uh, <laughs> that nobody would ever read. The bill that they all voted on? Yeah, we must. What is it? It was the, like 2,600 yeah, we have to pass it to read it. pages or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it Hillary Clinton that said that? Or no, it was that? Nancy, Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to pass it to so <laughs> that's just, see what's just, in. That's just the way it works. So we, you know, unfortunately, we have to pass it to read it. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. If you ever, <laughs> If you haven't read it, don't sign it. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Well, there, there was some bills I remember that were uh, so long that in the time they had to, to read the bill, it was like they had like four hours, and like the bill was would, would, would take three days to read the entire bill. And then I remember uh, what was it? Thomas Math. There was some kind of uh, legislator. I, I forget which legislator it was, um, but he was talking about how like he, he would want to 
sign the bill, but he went, has to read it first, and so he didn't sign it, didn't, uh, didn't vote for it, yeah. didn't vote for it because like there was no way he can physically read it in time in, or, in order for it to be for him to ethically vote for it. Hmm. And so, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Did you use the word ethic and vote in, in government <laughs> in like the same sentence? <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. <laughs> How are we learning that there's no ethics in these in these people, which is the problem? Well, and I think that's that's actually when we we do this doom scrolling and doom trolling to come up with subjects for the show. But one of the things, one of the good that's coming out of this is 71 percent of the population of the U.S. believes firmly that the system is corrupt, and that's way more than ever believed it. So once we get it up to like 80%, which they're doing through this climate, health care, and tax bill, <laughs> um, then, then uh, people are going to start voting the bums out, you know? I mean, there's going to be some people that come forward and say, wait a second, enough is enough, folks. Yeah. I believe that day is coming. I well, really we got a couple do. minutes left, and I wanted to cover this one because I want to show you that the madness never really ends. That over in good old England, the cyclists are now being, they're talking about putting... Uh, license plates on your on your uh, bicycle and insurance and insurance so yeah. you can get insurance and so you can get speeding tickets and because they've lowered the speed on the speed limit to 20 on, on many of their streets this is over in England. It, yeah. good called jolly old england and of course but you know it never these people will never stop well you know that's don't forget this is a country that requires a tv license so you know yeah. well no 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 hold on <laughs> you're, you're not the the license uh pays for TV that doesn't public have access. commercials. No, I know. So basically, BBC public no, access. Yeah, you don't. And but if you want all the other stuff, you got to pay for well, it. Well, the I, English actually do some things right. That's not one of them. <laughs> the BBC used to be a wonderful uh, and fair, uh, objective, uh, admired the world over. I mean, kind of yeah. like the New York Times claims it was. Uh, you know, the gray lady. Well, right now, folks, we all know the gray lady's a whore. But the nanny, uh, but, um, yeah. the nanny know, state never ends, though, John. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, my, my fear is if it starts there, guess what? where it's going to come. It's going to be in California now. Oh, so uh, did you see – this kind of reminds me of this, uh, and I want to circle back. But um, over in Australia, uh, it, I, I, there's was, there was a ordinance on a beach where if you're running, you have to wear a helmet. <laughs> like like and I thought it was a joke. I literally just thought, I thought it was a me like a, someone shared a meme. I think it was on on social media or something. And I literally thought it was a joke. Like there's no way this is real. This is edited. I went and checked. Even Snoop's confirmed it. All yeah. the the fact checkers confirmed it. This was a legit thing over in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you're at the beach, you have to wear a helmet to go for our job. The nanny staters. They're coming after all of us. <laughs> well, I actually, swear. Uh, let me on on this thing. You got a few seconds, Sean. Okay. So, yeah. uh, no, finish. You got like 20 seconds. Go ahead. Um, so. There is a benefit because all these bicyclists basically don't obey any traffic laws. They speed, uh, but if they're speeding, they don't get arrested because they're on a bicycle. You could kill somebody driving a bicycle, and the longest you would have to go to jail for killing somebody on a bicycle was two years because of the way the law was written. So there was some actual logic underneath it. But I good, do right? agree that the nanny state... Is Nanny State's coming Nanny for State's us anyway because we're us. out of time. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, guys, John, Tyler, for being here. Right, and guys. we want to, from Libertarian Counterpoint, please remember to love everyone.